All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is do uh, what my favorite thing is, is doing a graphic organizer about finding limits. And so in the center of our graphing or graphic organizer, we're going to say we're going to be finding limits. And our limit denotation is the limit as x approaches something of a function equals the limit, okay? And I always am a big on substitution. So here, after we get done doing that, we're going to substitute. And you're always going to do that first. And so here's substitution, which is always done first. You do that first. And if you get a number, that's your answer. That's like the easiest way to find a limit. Okay? That's the first thing you do. Now, the next thing is, is the big thing that you do, and I'm going to change color here and make this pretty, is always the algebra part. That if you um, substitute it in and you get... Uh, something that is an indeterminate form of zero over zero or uh, infinity over infinity, you can try doing some algebra, all right? So this usually happens when you have a rational number. So we're going to have a rational function, which is a zero over zero. So if you have a rational function that you get zero over zero, what do I do? So I substitute it first. And then I got this rational function. Well, the first thing you do is you check, can I factor and find the limit? So, okay, I try that. If that doesn't work and there's a, ra and there's a um, radical there, I try to rationalize either the numerator or the de denominator, depending where the, um, the radical is. And it's usually in the numerator because, so you can rationalize the numerator. Sometimes you'll even have a complex fraction that you have to get pretty first and then do that. But basically, this is the algebra portion. So I start substituting first, and I always do that. And then I go to try to do algebra. So if I get this indeterminate form of 0 over 0, I try factoring and then rationalizing. Okay. Um, so down here on the left, if I get a rational number and I get this. A number over zero. Okay. And remember, a rational number is I'm dividing polynomials. So I just kind of write that down. I have a polynomial over a polynomial. It's nice to have that with you to remember that. Okay. So if I do that, I know it's a vertical asymptote. And I know my, and, and lots of times you'll see this, you'll see x approaching a number from the right, x approaching a number from the left. So you see that a lot, and that's your vertical asymptote. And your limit is usually, it's always going to be plus or minus infinity. So your limit is infinity. So it's going to go um, up or down. That's the one thing on that one, okay? All right, uh, the last part over here, you could get a rational function, again, which is a polynomial divided by a polynomial. And you might get where x is approaching either plus or minus infinity. So over here, the limit was infinity because you're approaching from the right or left. Here, I, I'm actually approaching infinity from the right or left. This right here is the, asym the horizontal asymptote, and you need to know your three rules, okay? So this talks about your tails and that type of thing. In the middle here, I want to put this, where you can do, for limits, you can have an intuitive approach. And the intuitive approach means I'm actually going to put it in my, I'm going to graph it. And I'm going to change my, and then I'm going to look at my table change it to ask, and then you're either going to get really close to a number. So if it's a number, you're going to go to the right and left of the number and figure out what it is and get really close. Okay. If it goes to infinity, you're going to 
set up a table and you're going to do like this, a hundred, a thousand or negative a hundred, a thousand and show me that way. So that's the intuitive approach of limits where you can kind of do that with any of them to figure out what is my limit by just getting either really close to a number on the right or left. And I use stuff like 0 0.01, um, 0 0.001 negative 0.01, negative 0.001. And then here I'm going to use plus or minus 100, 1,000, depending on which side I'm going to go on. So that's this part of limits is, this is what we do to find them. So, okay. The next thing I want to do on here is actually discuss when limits fail to exist. So when do fails, limits fail to exist? Well, we have something called the general limit. And the general limit means I'm approaching it from the left and the right. So I'm actually going to do this. Hang on a second. Is I'm going to do this. Um, do the limit as x approaches a number, okay, of a function is the limit. But you got to remember the left, approaching from the left, must equal the left, they call it hand limit, has to equal the right hand limit for the general limit to exist. So that's just important with the general limit is to look at the right and left hand limit and make sure they equal, okay? If they don't, if they fail to exist, okay? The other way the limits fail to exist is if you have a vertical asymptote. And we've seen that a lot with vertical asymptotes, where the limit will fail to exist because they're either approaching positive or negative infinity. And again, it kind of falls over here if your left and right hand limits don't equal. So this is when limits. when limits fail to exist. Um, another time when limits fail to exist is when a function oscillates, and they always like to use the word wildly, which I think is pretty cool, that if it goes up and down like this, it's, there's no limit. It's oscillating wildly and it's, there's no limit. And this last corner here, we're gonna just throw in some continuity because continuity is important when it comes to limits. So if you can draw a graph, without picking up your pencil. And remember, you shouldn't have any holes or asymptotes. And remember, you always have to have an interval because it depends on what interval you're talking about to look for continuity. So they usually will always give you an interval. So that's um, limits, like the overview. And that's all for this video. I'll see you in class.